All right, we've been looking at conics, um, and we know that we have three types. Now, with this, we have hyperbolas, parabolas, okay, we have circles and ellipses. Now, here we're given equations, okay, and general form, and we want to figure out what type of conics they are. Are they a parabola? Are they a parabola? Are they an ellipse? Are they a circle? Okay, now to do that, it says use the discriminant. Now, you've done this before, but it's been a while. It's been in a different class. So, let's first, I'm going to give you some definitions and write it out, and then we'll go through it. All right, here you need to put this in your notes. Okay, now, um, we're going to have the general form of a squared plus bxy plus cy plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero. Now, the discriminant is going to come from the b squared minus 4ac. Now, you've done this with uh, other things, but uh, it may be a while, so it may be a little bit unclear. Uh, so go ahead and put this in your notes and refer, so you can refer back to it. And then I'm going to talk you through some of these. All right, here, we're going to work the odds together, and then I'm going to have you go back and work the evens. Now, we're going to use the discriminant to classify each conic section. All right, here we're looking at problem 23. Okay, now, I'm going to go ahead and write out for the first couple of them. Now, you can refer back to your notes. I'm going to write out the general form of the equation of any type of conics. We have a x squared plus b x y plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f is equal to zero. Now we're not going to need all of this. Now if we look at this, whatever's with the x squared value is our a. So from this, a is equal to two. Okay, b is anything with xy. We don't have anything that's got xy with it. So b is equal to zero. Okay, c is anything with y squared. Okay, now we don't have anything with y squared, so c is equal to zero. Okay, and then d um, would be anything that is with, actually we don't need d. So don't worry about d. Um, so we have a, we have b, and we have c. Uh, d would just be the next one that just has the x, where it would be the five. And then E would be whatever's with Y, but we don't need those two. But what we need is we need whatever's with the X squared, whatever's with BXY, and whatever's with Y squared. Okay, and so we're going to find it. Now, we're going to put it into this, B squared minus 4AC. See what value we come up with here. And then we're going to compare it uh, to the little chart that you had in your notes now. All right, so B squared is zero, so zero. Um, minus 4 times 2 times 0. So we get 0 minus 0. Okay, so we end up with 0. So now from this, for our, our in our chart, we were told if it's equal to 0, then it's a parabola. So this one is a parabola. Now again, if we go back to the chart, uh, we were given or I gave you, um, you can, um, you, if you go back to this chart, you can see that the parabola, again, it's, if it's equal to z, zero, it's a parabola. All right, same type of question. Um, we're not, I'm not going to write out the, the whole thing. What we need is A. A is whatever's with x squared. So A is 5. B is whatever's with the xy. We have no xy, so B is 0. And C is whatever's with our Y value, our Y squared value, sorry, which is equal to negative 5. So to come up with our discriminant, uh, what we're going to do is take, again, our equation B squared minus 4AC, and then see what we end up with that is and compare the numbers to see what type of conic uh, we have. All right, so B squared is 0 again. So minus 4 times 5 times negative 5. Okay, so we're just going to multiply all this together, and we end up with negative, actually, excuse me, it's going to be positive. 
So we end up with negative 4 times positive 5, which gives us negative 20 times negative 5, which would give us positive 100. And then we combine that with 0, so we get 100. Now, if we refer back to the chart here, uh, we're told that if this number we come up with is bigger than 100, then that's a hyperbola. All right, so this particular problem is going to be a hyperbola. So again, this one's a hyperbola. Okay, now let's look at the next example. All right, here again, we're going to pick out uh, the A. A is whatever's with x squared. B is whatever's with xy, so it's going to be 0 again. And then C is whatever's with y squared. Okay, now we're going to put it into our formula and compare it. So we get B squared minus 4 times A times C. Okay, this is going to end up being a negative number, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. So we end up with 4 times 9, which is going to be 36, times 4, and we end up with negative 144. And we end up with 0 here. So 0 minus 144, so we end up with negative 144. And we're going to compare that to our chart to see uh, which type of conics this is. All right, here's our chart again, and we ended up with a negative number. Okay, so it's going to fall into either the circle or an ellipse. Now, we'll have to decide from there. So for this one, we ended up with negative 144. Okay, so negative 144 is less than 0. Now, we have to compare our B value. Our B value was 0. Now, the question is, was A equal to C? All right, so let's go back and look at the problem we have. Now here, A is not equal to C, okay? So since this is less than 0 and A is not equal to C, that means that this is an ellipse. So again, we're comparing this number um, to in our chart. All right, let's look at example, um, we're going to look at 29. All right, A is 4, B is 0 again. C is equal to negative 9. So again, A comes from what's in front of the X squared. B is 0, and C is negative 9, okay, because it comes from the Y squared. So we're going to put it into our formula again here and see what we end up with. So we end up with 0 minus 4 times 4 times negative 9. So we're going to end up with a positive, nine, positive number here. Anytime this number is greater than 0, okay, anytime this is greater than 0, it's a hyperbola. So this number is greater than 0, so that means this is a hyperbola. So it's a hyperbola. I don't know. All right, let's look at another example. All right, in this one, A is equal to 62 because it's in front of the X squared. B is 0 because there is no XY. C is whatever's in front of Y squared, so we end up with 81. Okay, so we end up with B squared minus 4AC. So B squared, all right, B squared is 0 minus 4 times 62 times 81. Okay, so we're going to end up with a negative number here. Okay, so negative, um, it really doesn't matter what the number is, but it's just the negative. And then it says either going to be an ellipse or a circle, and we'll have to decide between those two. All right, so we end up with a pretty good sized number, negative 20088. Okay, and so that's less than zero. Okay, so now we're going to have to make a decision. Uh, you can refer back to the chart in your notes, um, but there's two relationships we have to worry about. If it's a circle, okay, if it's a circle, A is equal to C. Oops, C, not zero. All right, and so we look, A is not equal to C. Okay, so that means that this is not a circle. So that's out. So, and if for an ellipse, 
A is just not equal to C. So A is not equal to C. Um, so for this one, this would be an ellipse. All right, we have one other example. I'm going to try to go through pretty quick. All right, um, A is 1, B is 0, C, okay, in this case, C is going to be 1 as well. So we put it into B squared minus 4AC. Okay, B squared is going to be 0, so 0 minus 4 times 1 times 1. So we end up with negative 4. Okay, so that's less than zero. So that means we're going to choose either between a circle or an ellipse. Okay, now our, for it to be a circle, A has to equal C, which it does. So this one is a circle.